Uh, I mean, one more thing I wanted to touch on, if you are looking at property where you can use alternative energy, a uh, couple things to look for, which I found here, which is another thing that made this attractive, uh, besides the barn and the, the land. Um, I have a lot of open space that it doesn't hinder the sun at all for my solar panels. I don't have to worry about, you know, having to take trees down to get more sunlight or uh, try to find weird places to put panels so I can get the maximum sun. I mean, the sun rises over on that side of the barn and runs back behind the barn and sets over on that side of it. And it's like this is a, a south-facing barn. I can't believe how, I guess they made barns south-facing, south I don't know. Uh, but it's absolutely perfect. The garden back behind there is going to be perfect because of the sunlight and everything. And I put my panels over there and I don't have any problems. Uh, wind, you can hear, wind is not a problem up here. Uh, I am going, I will generate enough wind of my wind, or enough power of my turbine. I probably don't even need a solar panel just so that the turbines can laugh at the solar panels. But that's another thing to take into consideration. If you want solar, if you want wind, you know, we have, by being on top of this hill, and this barn goes up probably 35, 40 feet to the peak of the road. And then I'm gonna put a pole in the ground next to the barn, lean it up against the barn, go up about 30 feet above that. So I don't have to have one of those giant tower things with all these guy wires going down. I only have to put, you know, against the barn and use the barn as my support system. And then I will wind up, well, I'm going to go up about 10 or 15 feet on top of the barn. And I don't have to worry about all the guy wires and the towers and all that kind of crap. I'm going to put one on each end. And again, with this being the tallest, from the top of this barn, I can pretty much see the entire county. Uh, there's nothing impeding the wind, uh, which is good and bad because it do get windy up here. Um, we've had some really strong gusts. Now, I've not had anything flying away or, you know, busting anything up, but it does get windy. And uh, it's kind of neat to hear it howling when it starts out. You hear it coming through the trees. Uh, and you can see all the trees is blowing. It's really cool. But again, for alternative energy, I have unimpeded wind power. Um, I think it's hard to do solar or wind in a forested environment. Uh, you can, it depends on what your power needs are, and only you know how much power you're going to need. I'm not looking to live like a pioneer. I'm not doing that. I'm not cooking on a wood stove. I'm not, you know, taking showers or washing clothes in the creek, you know. I'm not doing any of that kind of stuff. I want all of my modern conveniences. Uh, if those aren't around, if something, if the shit does hit the fan and suddenly we have this EMP and there is no power, I will have power. I will have the wood stove, you know. And if I'm forced to do it, I will. But I'm not looking to get into that lifestyle. And I, I see these guys with solar systems surrounded by these trees. And yes, they do generate power. They generate quite a bit of power uh, to run some 12 volt lights, uh, to run a router for their computer, you know. But 
they all also have generators running to do anything else. If they got to run power tools or they got to, you know, do anything extra, it's fire up the generator. For me to go with what I want, I know my power needs and how we want to live. Um, I'm probably looking at $15,000 to supply all that I want. And for $15,000, I'm building a house, you know, putting in a driveway, putting in a septic, you know. I'll let the power company come and give me power. And then I'll start setting it up with on a grid type type system because the, the electric co-op up here does buy your excess power if you want to hook into it. So I'll take advantage of that and eventually add my own stuff. But I see a lot of people, we're off grid, we're off grid, and they struggle with this, you know, stuff unless they've got the money to put in all the stuff that they want. You know, then, you know, they have no problems. But I'm going to have a maximum out here of a hundred dollar electric bill, twelve hundred dollars a year for electric, you know, it would take me fifteen years to pay off my initial investment uh, to put in enough power that I want to run my TVs, to run my central air, to run the washer, you know, I mean, uh, it takes a lot to run all my power tools, to have a shop out here that I can work in without worrying about power, um, to do all the stuff I want around here. But that's my own personal choice. Now, if you can live with less and you're willing to accept that the only thing I'm going to run that I need power for is 12 volt lighting in the house, good for you. I got no problems with that. I'm telling you, I have two 100-watt solar panels out here and two Wally World batteries, uh, deep cycle batteries that are about 230 amp hours. I had that set up for the RV when we had it out here and hooked it into the RV and with just those two solar panels, we would come out here for the weekend. I could run the lights at night, we ran the TV DVD player, I would get up the next morning, make a pot of coffee, uh, at night we would run a fan if it was, you know, warm, and that supplied that power that I needed. Now, it wouldn't do it two nights in a row, but the next day, you know, sun would recharge everything, and then that night we were good to go. Um, so, you know, solar power does work, there's no question of that. It's just how much can you afford and how much actual power are you going to use? That's what you've got to, to figure out on your own and then figure out whether or not you can really afford to go off-grid. Uh, and off-grid is such a loose term anymore and it's so, such a worn out, useless term anymore because there are a million different ideas of what off-grid means, you know? Uh, it just doesn't mean anything anymore to me. 
Uh, it's a way to to market your channel and it's keywords for trying to get more views on your shit. I don't know. Um, to me, off grid has always been just simply off the power grid. Using alternative energy, using the energy that I make, and I don't buy it from the man. Uh, same with water, you know. If I don't have a well, I will have a rain catchment system. Um, but I am going to put in a well, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. Water, the well for that building that was put in, in I don't know, 20 years ago, they found water at 100 feet. Uh, there's a guy that lives back behind me, back across that holler. Um, he's got a 300 foot well. And he's never run dry, he's never run out of water. And we're far enough away from all the fracking crap and the the Marcellus shale and Utica shale, all those shales, that it hasn't affected the well water yet. So it's good, clean water. I'll probably put in a couple hundred foot well and supplement things with rain catchment. And we'll never have a problem with water. And I'll have a septic. So I won't be connected to county sewage or county water, you know, not connected to the power company. So you're off the grid, you know? The grid is the power grid. I've never heard the internet referred to as the grid. You know, because everybody's like, how can you be off the grid if you're on the internet? You know, <laughs> the internet is not part of the grid, people, sorry. Uh, but again, that's my opinion. Uh, we're going to have cable television, or not cable, but we'll have Dish or Direct TV or something because we do watch television. We're going to have our computers. We're going to have our our internet. We're going to have all that stuff, you know. But we can still be off the grid and have all of that stuff. Uh, quit thinking that off the grid means you're living out in the prairie in the 1840s. That is not off grid. The TV shows are showing that. The commercials are showing that is the off-grid life and it's all bullshit and that's why it's become so over commercialized and overused uh, but anyway I ramble which is my which is what I do uh, I just wanted to share some thoughts on and some thoughts on solar and why I'm going with electric and then solar later uh, but if you're looking for land, I wish you tons of luck. Just uh, keep looking. And like I said, when you find something, grab it. If you think it's something you want, grab it. Don't wait for it. <laughs> but this is Joe from the barn out here at St. Bernard Acres. Thank you all for watching. Good luck in your endeavors. I'm out. <laughs>